Oh, welcome to our series. We, we got, got time. time. <laughs> My name is Aisha. I'm a licensed cosmetologist in the state of Illinois. And I'm Elise. I'm a licensed cosmetologist in the state of states of Georgia, California, and Illinois. And we are the founders of the 30 Day Hair Detox, Black Girl Magic, and Cut and Kinky. Kinky. We got so much more. It's so much to keep up with. But we got time though. We got time. <laughs> and we wanted, before we even got into the topic, we want to describe why. Because folks are like, well, why aren't hairstylists out here on YouTube? The reason why is what? We are behind no these time. chairs. There's no time. Most of the time, hairstylists <laughs> are behind their chairs working one on one with clients who what are paying them for information. They're paying them for a time. They're paying them for a service they, that mm -hmm. they expect to get done. At, at like a quality service, no quality less. Quality service. And so when it comes to like, okay, when you're doing that 40, 50, 60 hours behind the chair a week, there's no time to sit and record and edit and post and, and take pictures and, like, take pictures I mean, and post some more. I hear this from my other side of friends. <laughs> like some of them are like dragging their feet. Like I don't want to do social okay. media, and I get I it. I dragged my feet for years. I get it. I <laughs> like I get it. It's like an extra thing to do, but it's a it's a new part of the industry now. Uh, the visuals are have become so important from pictures to videos and so this is where we've evolved into the space and so mm -hmm. we have made it our business with the way that we've done our schedules even in the salon because neither of us are full-time behind the chair yeah and so we make it a part to do this for the consumer so that y'all understand where we're coming from so we actually mm -hmm. really wanted to address today the so-called natural hair tags. <laughs> like, who came up with this foolishness? I don't know. You know what I think happened? So, okay, let's just go back, right? Okay. So, when we were all getting relaxers. Now, I can't speak for everybody else because I was only going to the salon when I needed a touch-up. It so. wasn't in the budget. Um, <laughs> my mom didn't have a lot of money. Uh, she was a single mom with two kids. My dad was a, a single man out there in the streets. <laughs> Kicking it. Had a good job. But he didn't see the value in me going to the salon to get my hair done. And so uh, when I did get the relaxer, I think my mom had scraped up money for me to get this relaxer. I don't know where she got this money from. And eventually my grandmother started making it her business for me to go to the salon. But I only went for touch-ups. Mm -hmm. So that if I'm only going for touch-ups, I go every eight weeks. Which is you went every eight weeks. I was going like every 12, 13. No, I was going every <laughs> eight weeks because as soon as I couldn't comb those edges, I was back in the salon. <laughs> so I was going every eight weeks, which is every two months, which means I was getting six touch ups a year. Mm -hmm. That was $60 a touch up. That is, let me do the math, 300, six times eight, $360? Four, no, $480. Um, 48, eight times six is 40, 48. Yeah, 48. Maybe? No, no, it's, it's every two months. Yeah, that's twelve months. That's twelve months. Six. 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 six times. Oh, six. You were paying six. I was. Oh, like, oh, 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 but no, so I was, mine was 60, mm -hmm. and yours was? Mine were 80. Okay, so mine was, that was $360 a year. And mine was, uh, times four, $320 a year. So, so I was only getting about four a year. Oh, wow. So when yeah. you look at that math, because we're, we're like at the low end of scale, like we're people that are going, a, like. And this, this is back in like 1994. Four. So just to give you some like perspective, like ninety four yeah, to like 90, 90, 90, yeah, ninety two. I got my relaxer yeah. in ninety two. So like ninety one, ninety two. Yeah, I got my ninety four. And okay. then as a grown person, I was paying a hundred and seventy. I want to say I was Every, probably eighty. But that's because my hair. One, my I was very particular at that point. I was already a hairstylist, and I understood how proper application of the chemical was important at that time. And so I went for a stylist whose main job was like keeping your hair extremely healthy, doing amazing cuts. Okay. Her location was wonderful. She was in a very nice salon. And I was a grown person who had like a job and was married. I could, you I, had a little I, had, I had a little points. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Leave my hair for my, my touch ups. I think at that point it was like every eight weeks because I was blocking a shortcut. Okay, so I was still going every <laughs> like eight weeks because at from being a young person at 13 years old getting a relaxer and mm -hmm. having to care for my hair myself I actually became sort of an expert of my own hair until yeah. I met my stylist that I got when I was like around maybe 16 um, and when I met her she really taught me how to take care of my hair. Now my hair still never like got as long as it has gotten since I've been re uh, like not, I'm sorry natural. Mm -hmm. um, but my hair always looked good because she was a great cut. Um, she <laughs> did great cuts. She did great color. Um, so to get back to all of that, so if I'm paying three hundred sixty dollars a year and then eventually more because it was mm -hmm. eighty dollars. Um, I'm still paying more as a relaxed person than I am paying as a natural because guess what? If the client is following the same type of schedule that I'm following, so I, I'm mm -hmm. saying a DIY client, I'm, I'm using that as an okay. example. Okay. So the DIY client who can do her hair at home in between visits, she's only coming in for a haircut. Now, Elise and I are at different places in our careers. I'm new. And I've been doing <laughs> she's this been doing this for a while, so our prices are different. But our new client appointments... Hers is 165. 165. Mm -hmm. Mine's is 150 now. Yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> no. uh, so my my I'm 150. So the new client appointment. Here's why. Let, let us explain. Let, 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 let me say this first. There is no tax. If you're coming for a haircut three to four times a year. Yes. One, you're coming three to four times a year. You're spending 165 for the first appointment. Right. So my second appointments are one ten. So that's three at one ten. That's three thirty. One sixty five. You're paying less than five hundred dollars for the year. Yes. In hair care maintenance. Now, what happens is versus being a relaxed hairstylist. When you're a relaxed hairstylist, you can usually and not necessarily double booking, but you can juggle three to four clients at a time that are at different points in their service and still get that client out within. An hour and a half to two and a half hours, depending upon the density of the hair and the complexity of the yes. style chosen. Yes. Now, with my new client appointments, it's oftentimes where I'm spending, I'm spending about an hour and a half to two hours just with that new client. You might be spending a longer time because <sighs> one, folks don't try me like that. <laughs> yeah. Folks realize not to try me like I have a reputation now. <laughs> that you will show up the way I ask you to show up, <laughs> and you're likely doing a like following my routines before you even get in with me. Aisha's getting kind of the new I'm new getting clients. like super new people. I'm getting people who are coming out of like uh, protective styles, weaves and wigs. Um, I am getting people who don't necessarily do their hair, but they really want to learn. So because of that, I work, I, I have, a, I think I have like a, <laughs> I, I feel for them because I understand. I just mm -hmm. grew up learning to do my. I had to do my hair out of necessity. I yes. learned out of necessity, so I have this like I feel for them and I want them to learn too. And I feel mm -hmm. very confident that they can. So my new client appointments can run anywhere from an hour and a half mm -hmm. to four hours, depending on the condition mm -hmm. of the person's hair. And sometimes because of that. I have to reverse my service, but I, I'm, I'm saying now that it's not really a reversal of my service. You're, more she of a, has to do her service in a different way. I have to based on service. what the condition of the, of hair, the hair is. And I'm not, I'm not really mind. getting those clients yeah. anymore. So we say all of that to say, talk about natural hair tax. You're talking about, again, the time, the education, the tools, and the products that natural stylist is doing and using. Um, if you're an every two-week client, that's great, but... You, does that mean that you should pay less than somebody who's coming in for the same service? And for the amount um, of time it takes for to the do amount of time. Th these services. Like, yeah. you guys want to do, you know, twist yeah. outs and you want to do flat twist up, you know, updos. Up that takes it's, two hours of dedicated oh, time. Wow. It does. It's, it, it absolutely does. So, when we get into that, like, it's like, you're going to take up two hours of my time. What does What do those two hours mean to me when it comes mm -hmm. down to my <laughs> because hair, here's what I also think is we think of hair in our community, unfortunately, as a hustle. And a as hobby. And a hobby. As something somebody does outside of their real jobs. And here's the thing. To find somebody who is excellent at what they do, who understands hair care, who has their finger on the pulse of all the products and formulation and technique 
um, new things out there, that has to be a career. That is what you do day in and day out and you become an expert at that. So that particular career has to then support um, the business one. Whether they're a salon owner, a suite owner, a booth renter, or even a commission stylist, it has to support the business. Mm -hmm. And then it has to support that stylist life. And I hate when folks will be like, I'm not pay I'm not trying to pay that stylist car note. Why are you sitting in my chair? Because <laughs> why, why would I be working? Like you you go to work so you can pay your car note, right? You go to work so you can pay your rent, right? So that means that whoever's coming through this chair is paying my rent. <laughs> It's paying my car note. So, I mean, we pay for Beyonce's press on nails and she changes throughout her performance. Yes. So nobody, nobody gets mad about that. We're like, yes, Beyonce yes, changed really change those, change those press on nails. No, like, and just imagine, like, the people who are behind those press on nails because she's not she's not going to Walgreens and getting Lee press on nails, honey. She is getting some of the baddest <laughs> nail jobs done by people all across the country. Nail, who she pays. hair, makeup, all of that. Her entire beauty squad. I mean, I have not seen the whole Coachella performance. <laughs> Hopefully, I will get to it someday. I'm sure you will, but I mean, she. I'm saying that, and I'm sharing that. Like, she, no expense is. She's not worried about the expense of it. She wants that because that person can provide what she needs mm -hmm. for her everyday life and for her job. Because these are things that she needs for her job. So let's say that maybe a specific artist is not in your budget. Or you don't necessarily value that service. So it's not about there being a natural hair tax. It's about the value that that service and that service provider brings to you as the consumer. Because yes, you everybody can do hope. Well, not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> a good majority of us can do certain things to our hair at home. But what, is, what are those hours? What do they mean to you? Do they mean the difference between going to brunch with your homegirls? Do they mean the difference of going on that date with that hot person? Does it mean the difference between I'm going to go to church or I'm not going to go to church because <laughs> my hair is jacked up? Or am, are my goals or that my hair grows long, but I'm sabotaging those same goals by not getting a haircut and not using the proper products for your particular hair and what we keep going with. And your style, like, because that's, like, the biggest thing I think we see in the salon is that people don't know how to use the products. So they're oh, coming God. to us <laughs> because they're like, look, I did this to my hair mm -hmm. and it lasted, like, two hours after I got to work. It was over. It's like, no, you're, you should be able to get more than two hours out of your hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how to do it. Let me teach you how to duck you real quick. Yeah. Let's twist we're, out. Like, let's get it. Let's get it. And we're, <laughs> we're, we're educating. And I, there are, here's the thing, there are stylists like that all over. But we have to do, as consumers, because we're consumers as well. Absolutely. We have to do our due diligence on who those people are. And so we wanted to cover how to find a stylist. Because... We get a lot of requests. It's like, oh, you all got somebody here. You got somebody there at halftime. It's like, we're going to have to do the same thing y'all do. And Google. Google is, Google is your friend, friend, guys. It is. It really is. And if you if, if you can't find it on Google or you find somebody who's um, in a place that you're not in, maybe contact that style and say, hey, I like your work. Do you happen to know a stylist in Alaska that can do my hair? But here's what also happens again. You can Google. And this is how you do it. You Google natural hair in your city. I'm sure people will come up. What you do True. is you check and see if they have a website. You check and see if they have an Instagram page or a Facebook page. And you get in contact with them. You ask if they do consultations. If they don't do consultations, which honestly I don't, we I um, I don't I don't know consultation is is your is your hair under some water that appointment you got to make that first time mm -hmm. find appointment and so you do that and from their reviews from their their internet portfolios you decide to say okay I'm gonna go in for a style or I'm gonna go in mm -hmm. for a boot camp or I'm gonna go in for a mini cut and you go. You do your due diligence, and then you start to trust the person who is working on your hair. Yeah, and Instagram, guys. Instagram is your friend. 
Um, most of our stylist colleagues out there are using Instagram mm -hmm. with a vengeance. They're putting out dope ass content, taking beautiful ass pictures, all of that. Um, doing phenomenal work out there in the streets. They know who they are. Like they're they're mm -hmm. really servicing these clients out there. So we're seeing them, and people are finding these stylists through Instagram. So don't be afraid to use Instagram. Uh, we get clients. Hashtag natural hair, your city. Yeah. Hashtag your city, natural hair. So do your due diligence. Just as we find the restaurant we want to go to, just as we find our doctors, our dentists, uh, just as we find our clothes half the time. Because you know, we're like, oh my God, I see that. I'm going to go search for that, look that up. We need to do that with who we're entrusting with their hair. So. We're going to wrap it up. If y'all got something to say, drop it below in the comments. Fight us. Yeah, let's argue. Let's argue. We got time. <laughs>